All right, what's up with y'all? Everything good? Okay, now we on part three. Judas chapter nine. Judas chapter nine. Now she about to get ready to pray and everything. You see what I'm saying? And get prepared to do her thing. So it says, Judas fell upon her face and put ashes upon her head and uncovered the sackcloth with which she was clothed. And about the time that the incense of that evening was offered in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord, Judah cried with a loud voice and said, O Lord, God of my father Simon, to whom thou gavest the sword to take vengeance of the strangers, who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her, and discovered the thigh to her shame, and polluted her virginity to her reproach. For thou hast said it, it shall not be so. And yet they did so. Wherefore, thou gavest their rulers to be slain, so that they died their bed and blood, being deceived and smited the servants with their lords, and the lords upon their thrones, and has given their wives for a prey, and their daughters to be captives, and all their spoils to be divided among thy children, thy dear children, which were moved with thy zeal and abhorred the pollution of their blood and called upon thee for aid. O God, O my God, hear me also a widow. For thou hast wrought not only those things, but also the things which fell out before me and which ensued after me. Thou hast, th uh, thou hast thought upon the things which are now, and which are to come, yea, what things thou didst determine were ready at hand, and said, Lo, we are here, for all thy ways are prepared, and thy judgments are in your foreknowledge. For behold, the Assyrians are multiplied in their power, they, exalt, uh, they are exalted with horse and man, they glory in the strength of their footmen. They trust in shield and spear and bow and bow and sling. And know not that thou art the Lord that breakest the battles. The Lord is thy name. Throw down their strength in thy power in thy power, and bring down their force in thy wrath, for they have purposed to defile thy sanctuary and to pollute the tabernacle which thy glorious name rested, and to cast down with sword the horn of thy altar. Behold their pride, and send thy wrath upon their head. Give unto mine hand, which am a widow, the power that I have conceived. Smit by the deceit of my lips, the servant with the prince, and the prince with the servant, Break down their, state, their stateliness, their stateliness by the hand of a woman. For your power standeth not in multitude, nor thy, thy might in strong men. For thou art a God of the afflicted, and a helper of the oppressed, an upholder of the weak, a protector of the forlorn, a savior of them that are without hope. I pray thee, I pray thee, O God of my Father, and God of the inheritance of Israel, Lord of the heavens and earth, greater uh, creator of the waters, king of every creature, hear thou my prayer, and make my speech and deceit to be their wound and stripe, who have purposed cruel things against thy covenant and thy hallowed house, and against the top of the Zion, and against the house of the possession of, the children, of thy children. And make every nation and tribe to acknowledge that thou art the God, thou art the God of all power and might, and that there is none other that protected the people of Israel but thou. Okay? So it says he is the upholder of the weak 
a protector of the forlorn, a forlorn, and a savior of them that are without hope. He saves the people that does not have hope, they have strength. You know what I'm saying? Like going to get it. To get up out of hope, right? But anyway. So y'all see what's going on with this. She's sending a prayer out. And so let's continue. Now after that, she had ceased to cry unto the Lord God of Israel. Uh, now after that, she had ceased to cry unto the God of Israel and had made an end of all these words, right? She rose where she had fallen down and called her maid and went down into the house in which she abode in the Sabbath days and in her feast days. So it's like, yeah, she got on her knees and prayed, but she got up to get busy. It's what they're trying to let us know. In the same place she fell is the same place she stood and put off the sackcloth which she had on and put off the garments of her widowhood and washed her body all over with water and anointed herself with precious ointments and braided her hair um, and braided the hair of her head and put on a tire upon it and put on garments of gladliness wherewith she was clad during the life of Manasseh, her husband. And she took sandals upon her feet and put about her her bracelets and her chains and her rings and her earrings and all her ornaments and decked herself bravely to allure the eyes of all men that should see her. All right. Then she gave her maid a bottle of wine and a crusade of oil and filled a bag with parched corn and lumps of figs and with fine bread. So she folded all these things together and laid them upon her. Thus, they went forth to the gate of the city of Bethulia and found standing there Osias and the ancients of the city, Cabris and Caris. And when they saw her, that her conscience was altered and her apparel was changed, they wondered at her beauty very greatly and said unto her, The God, the God of our fathers, give thee favor and accomplish thine enterprises to the, uh, to the glory of the children of Israel and to, exaltation, to the exaltation of Jerusalem. Then they worshiped God. And she said unto them, Command the gates of the city to be opened unto me, that I may go forth to accomplish the things whereof ye have spoken with me. So they commanded the young men to open unto her, as she had spoken. And when they, uh, when they had done so, Judith went out, she and her handmaid with her. And the men of the city looked after her until she was going down the mountain, until she had passed the valley and could see her no more. Thus, they went straight forth in the valley and the first watch of the Assyrians met her and took her and asked her, What people are thou? And whence comest thou? And where the goest thou? And she said, I am a woman of the Hebrews, and I am fled from them, for they shall be given you to be consumed. And I am coming from um, before Holofernes, the chief captain of your army, to declare words of truth. And I will show him a way whereby he shall go and win all the hill country without losing the body or life of any one of his men. Now, when the men heard these words, 
and beheld her conscience. They wondered greatly at her brood and said unto her, Thou hast saved thy life, and that thou hast hasted to come down to the presence of our Lord. Now therefore, come to his tent, and some of us shall conduct thee until they have delivered thee to, the, uh, to his hands. And when thou standest before him, be afraid, be, uh, be not afraid in thine heart, but show unto him according to thy word, and he will entreat thee well. Then they chose of them and a hundred men to accompany her and her maid, and they brought her to the tent of Holofernes. When uh, then was there a concourse throughout all the camp, for her coming was noised among the tents. And they came about her as she stood without the tent of Holofernes, till they told him of her. And they wondered at her broody, and admired the children of Israel because of her. And everyone said to his neighbor, who would despise this people that have among them such women? Surely it is not good that one of them be left who being let go might deceive the whole earth. And they that lay near Holofernes went out and all their servants and they brought her into the tent now, Holofernes rested upon his bed under a canopy, which was woven with purple and gold and emeralds and precious stones. So they showed him of her, and he came out before his tent with his silver lamps, with his silver lamps going before him. And when Judith was come before him and his servants, they all marveled at the beauty of her conscience. And she fell down upon her face and did reverence unto him. And his servants took and his servants took her up. Alright, so y'all see what's going on, man. I know that was a little choppy to flow with, but yeah. The the thing is what? She done went, she done finessed her way. To her the furnace. And she said she was going to tell them all truth and all this kind of stuff, which she did tell tr uh, some truths too. But um, yeah, she finessing the whole time though. Don't forget about what she prayed for. Remember? She prayed to um, be able to deceive these people with her mouth. Without for you know, with the hand of with the hand of by the hand of a woman. Right? That's what she said. Remember? Alright. So let's continue. Then said Polyphernus unto her, Woman, be of good comfort, fear not in thine heart. For I never heard any that was willing to serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of all the earth. Now, therefore, if thy people that dwelleth in the mountains had not set light by me, I would not have lifted up my spirit against them, but they have done these things to themselves. But now tell me, wherefore thou art fled from them, and art come unto us, for thou art come for safeguard. Be of good comfort. Thou shalt live this night and hereafter, for none shall hurt uh, shall hurt thee, but entreat thee well, as they do the servants of King Nebuchadnezzar, my lord. Then Judah said unto him. Receive the words of your servant and suffer thine handmaid to speak in thy presence. And I will declare no lie to my Lord this night. 
And if thou would follow the words of thine handmaid, God would bring the thing perfectly to pass by me, by thee. And my Lord shall not fail of his purposes. As Nebuchadnezzar, king of all the earth, liveth, and as his power liveth, who hath sent thee for the upholding of every living thing. For not only men shall serve him by thee, but also the beasts of the field and the cattle and the fowls of the air shall live by the power under Nabucodonosor and all his house. Y'all hear this game she running on him? Y'all hear this finessing? She said everything shall live shall live by the power of Nabucodonosor and all his house. For we have heard of your wisdom, of thy wisdom, and thy policies, and it is reported in all the earth that thou only art excellent in all the kingdom, and mighty in knowledge, and wonderful in feats of war. Now, as concerning the matter which Ankiah did speak in thy counsel, which have heard his words, I mean, we have heard his words. For the men of Bethulia saved him, and he declared unto them all that he had spoken unto thee. Therefore, O Lord and Governor, respect not his word, but lay it up in the heart, for it is true. For our nation shall not be punished. Neither can swore prevail against them, except they sin against their God. And now, that my Lord be not defeated and frustrate, and frustrate of his purpose, even death is not falling upon them. And their sin hath overtaken them, wherewith they will provoke their God to anger, Whensoever they shall do that, which is not fit to be done. For their victuals fail them, and all their water is scant. And they have determined to lay hands upon their cattle, and purposed to consume all those things that God hath forbidden them to eat by his laws. And are resolved to spend the first fruits of the tents of wine and oil which they had sacrificed and reserved for the priests that serve in Jerusalem before the face of our God though which things is not lawful for any of the people so much as to touch with their hands for they have sent some to Jerusalem because they also that dwell there have done the like to bring them a license from the Senate. Now, when they shall bring them word, they will for, um, forthwith do it. And they shall be given thee to be destroyed the same day. Wherefore, I, thine handmaid, knowing all this, am fled from their presence. And God hath sent me to work things with thee, whereat all the earth shall be astonished, and whosoever shall hear it. For thy servant is religious, and serveth the God of heaven day and night. Now therefore, my Lord, I will remain with thee, and thy servant will go out by night into the valley. And I will pray unto God, and he will tell me when they have committed their sins. And I will come and show it unto thee. Then thou shalt go forth with all thine army, and there shall be done, and there shall none of them that shall resist thee. They say, and there shall be none of them that shall resist thee. And I will lead thee through the midst of Judea until thou 
come before Jerusalem. And I was set thy throne in the midst of thereof. And thou shalt drive them as sheep that have no shepherd. And a dog shall not so much as open his mouth at thee. For these things were told me according to my foreknowledge. And they were declared unto me. And I am sent to tell thee. Then her, then her words pleased Holofernes and all his servants. And they marveled at her wisdom and said, there is not such a woman from one end of the earth to the other, both for beauty of face and wisdom of words. Likewise, Holofernes said unto her, God hath done well to send thee before the people, that strength might be in our hands, and destruction upon them that lightly regard my Lord. And now thou art both beautiful in thy conscience and witty in words. Surely, if thou doest thou hast spoken, thy God shall be my God. And thou shalt dwell in the house of the of King Nabucodonosor, and shalt be renowned, uh, renowned throughout the whole earth, and shall be and shall be yeah, and shall be renowned throughout the whole earth. All right, so now y'all seen, y'all hear how Judith running this game on them. See what I'm saying? Putting that work on them. Putting that talk game. Y'all see what's going on. Y'all see what's going on, chapter 12. Then he commanded to bring her. Uh, then he commanded to bring her in where his plate was set, and bade that they should prepare, uh, prepare for her as his own meats. I'm sorry. Let me read that again. It said, "Then he commanded her. Uh, he commanded to bring her." Sorry, y'all. My bad. Let's, um, Run this back. Let's run this down right quick. All right. It say, then he commanded to bring her in, where his plate was set, and bade that they should prepare for her of his own meats, and that she should drink of his own wine. And Judah said, I would not eat thereof, lest there be an offense. But provision shall be made for me of the things that I have brought. Then Hullabernus said unto her, If thy provision should fail, how should we give thee the like? For there be none with us of your nation, of thy nation. Then said Judith unto his uh, uh, then said Judith unto him, As thy soul liveth, my lord, thine handmaid shall not spend those things that I have. Before the Lord work my hand, the things that which, the things that he hath determined. All right? So she said, don't worry about what I'm going to eat, man. I'm going to be scraped. You know what I mean? Don't even worry about it. You see? And Hall of Furnace was like, hey, whenever you run out of food or whatever, then how are we going to give you the food that you need and want then? You see what I'm saying? That's why she was like, don't worry about it. Then the servants of Hall of Furnace brought her into the tent, and she slept till midnight. And she arose when it was toward the morning watch and sent to her friend saying, Let my Lord now command that thine handmaid may go forth unto prayer. Then Holofernes commanded his guard that 
they should not stay her. Thus she abode in the camp three days, and went out in the night into the valley of Bethulia, and washed herself in a fountain of water by the camp. And when she came out, she besought the Lord, God of Israel, to direct her to the raising up the children of her people, of her people, of her people, I'm sorry. So, come on now. So she came in clean and remained in the tent until she did eat her meat that evening. You know, these distractions, y'all. I don't know what's up with this. All right, let me read this again. Eight. It say, and when she came out, she besought the Lord God of Israel to direct her way to the raising up of the children of her people. So she came in clean and remained in the tent until she did eat her meat at evening. And in the fourth day, Holofernes made a feast to his own servants only and called none of the, sir, uh, officers, of the, uh, to the officers to the banquet. Then said he to Bogoas the Enoch, who had charge over all that he had, Go now and persuade this Hebrew woman, which is with thee, that she come unto us and eat and drink with us. For lo, it would be a shame for our person if we shall let such a woman go, not having her company, not having had her company. For if we draw her not unto us, she will laugh us to scorn. All right, so y'all see what's going on. He trying to knock some boots, all right? He trying to get busy with the female. And y'all see the female, she say, no, I ain't gonna be doing no eating and all that there. You know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do my own thing, you see? She ain't going for it. She gamed up, you see? And so, you know, she got into the habit of going out and praying and all that, doing all the stuff that she was supposed to be doing, that she liked doing, you know? All right? And they, and they saying it'll be a shame that we don't be able to get busy with her. Or if I don't get busy with her, it'll be, I'll be a laughing stock, basically. You see what I'm saying? So y'all see what's going on. Y'all hear it. All right, now 13. It say, then went Bogoas from the presence of Holofernes and came to her and, and, and he said, let not this fair damsel fear to come to my Lord and to be honored in his presence and drink wine and be merry with us and be made this day as one of the daughters of the Assyrians which served in the house of Nabucodonosor. All right, so you see, then it'll come on out or whatever. So she knows about that time. She knows she can't stall too much longer, you see. So watch what she say. Then said Judith to him, Who am I now that I should gain save my Lord? Surely, whatsoever pleases him, I will do speedily. And that shall be my joy unto the day of my death. <laughs> Boy, she was slick. It says, so she arose and decked herself with her apparel and all her woman's attire. And her maid went and laid soft skins on the ground for her over against Holofernes, which she had received of Bogoas for her daily use, that she might sit and eat upon them. Now, when Judith now, when Judith came in and sat down, Holofernes, his heart was ravished with her, and his mind was moved, and he desired greatly her company. For he waited a time to deceive her from the day that he had seen her. Then said Holofernes to her, Drink now and be merry with us. So Judah said, I will drink now, my Lord, because 
My life is magnified in thee, in me, this day more than all the days since I was born. Then she took and ate and drank before him what her maid had prepared. And Holla Furnace took great delight in her and drank more wine than that he had drunk at any time in one day since he was born. All right, so y'all see what's going on right now? That he didn't got pissy drunk. You know what I'm saying? So he, you know, he didn't drunk so much. He ain't, but he ain't never drunk that much in his life. Is what they just got finished saying, right? He never drank that much in his life, and he was trying to get her drunk, but she got her handmade fist of hers for her. You see what I'm saying? So she giving her enough. Not, you know what I'm saying? She ain't getting her drunk. You know, they got game. These females got some game right here. These Hebrew females. Real talk. Real talk. Hey, so, um, yeah. Y'all see what just, y'all see what's going on so far. And now we about to get ready to get to the last part of this situation. You know, to where you see the head get chopped off. Head about to get cut off, people. So, Check check out the uh part four. Check out part four. And let's finish this boy on off. Or let's finish this girl on off rather. Because um that's what we're talking about, a female, you know. But uh, until next time, I get with y'all on the next one. Peace. <laughs>